Hi, today we're going to be looking at the Bose Wave Radio. Now, purchase it off eBay for spares or repair. Uh, it was around about £20. I'll just bring the listing up so you can have a look. Uh, it takes a figure of 8 lead on the back there. So we'll just plug one in and we'll see what it does. And a number 2 is just lit up there. Apparently it doesn't switch on. And that appears to be correct. It seems pretty much dead apart from uh, that. I'll just unplug it. And we'll plug it back in just to see if that makes any difference. And now it just appears to be dead. He's dead, Joe. Right, so we'll take it apart and we'll see if we can repair it. Let's uh, see how this comes apart then. Looks like these four screws on the bottom here, so we'll remove those. Maybe better doing it this way. And we're in. Or well, we're into half of it anyway. So it's uh, <laughs> quite dusty inside. So I think I'll just get the uh, vacuum and we'll just give it a quick clean there, uh, a quick clean out before I go any further. Right, that's a bit better. Let me see what we're doing with the thing now. Right. Well, let me see a fuse down there. That looks mainly like the radio part of things. I guess this is the amplifier here, and those will probably go up to the speakers. So I think we'll just unplug those for a moment, just to give her a bit more wiggle room. And I guess this is the ribbon cable that goes to the actual clock at the uh, front of it. I'm not too sure how this bit separates from the rest of it because I can't see any screws unless it's just kind of clipped together or something. Right, so where do we start? Um, well, the fact that it lit up there, we must be getting some voltage to it. I can see a few capacitors here. So we've got an old school. Oh, I just pulled that uh, ribbon cable out there. I'll just remove that before we end up damaging it. Right, so it looks like we've got a transformer here. The mains comes in round about here into the transformer. That's the output of the transformer. We've got a bridge rectifier there. Uh, looks like we've got three capacitors and that's probably a voltage regulator. Now, I don't know whether the problem is going to be in this section or in the front panel. Um, I wonder if there's any test points or anything marked on the board for any voltages because we don't know what voltages um, we need on different things here. I think I might have a look at this uh, at this front panel part actually to see if we can figure out how this comes apart. Now it looks like I can see some small holes in that area. Which we may have to poke something in. Um, it looks like there possibly may be a, a thing in this back here as well. Which might give us access to the front bit there. Uh, and there's some, there's four clips down there as well. 
Like I say, I'm not 100% sure how this comes apart. Let's uh, find a small screwdriver and we'll see if we can maybe move some of these clips or something, see if it'll give her an idea. push these along slightly without breaking them because the plastic's quite brittle as we've just discovered Yeah, I think you're supposed to put a big screwdriver in and then give it a half a twist. Nice. Now, I don't think that really helps, but that's how you remove the front panel. By the way, but it looks like there's something more under here. Yeah, it looks a bit of a nightmare to get apart this actually. I think the plastic's just so brittle on this, it's uh it's a bit of a nightmare. Right, okay, let's uh let's see if that does anything. I think I might be making a bit of progress now, right. Oh, that's a VFD. I thought it would be, um, I thought it was just like a, uh, an LED display, but it looks like it's a, a VFD on this. Interesting. That slides forward now. There's a connector under there, but I'm not sure how it uh, how it unplugs. Let's see if we can get uh, that speaker wire out there. We'll see how this board comes out. It's like there's something just holding it in a little bit. A few moments later. Right, I figured it out. It slides forward, it's just stuck on the connector. You can push that back and then this part just comes off from like that. And then that should give us access to get the display out. Right, let's put the speakers on to one side. And we'll have a look at this. Now, I don't know if this is just the uh, display. I would suspect there might be a big IC or something behind this. And I can see something here. So I would think that's the actual clock chip just at the back here under the display you can just uh, you can just see it just down there 
that's the IC and those are the pins for the vacuum fluorescent display so I wonder if there's a problem with that uh, I wonder if there's a problem with this clock chip here I'll just see if we can see any dry joints or anything I can't see anything off hand if that looks obvious But it may be well just uh, running over them with the iron, just to be sure. Right, so um, is it worth bringing the microscope in or not? I might just uh, bring lower the camera down. So, just one moment, please. A little bit close of you. Right. So it seems my solar iron station has given up the ghost. So I've had to resort back to the uh, old trusty Antex. So I think the uh, solar iron station is now going to feature in a future repair video. So we'll uh, just go over some of these joints. I'll put a bit of flux on there first. Once I find me flux. Alright, we'll give that a bit of clean up. Right, now I don't know if that'll make any difference, but uh, we shall give it a try. and get this somewhere so we can see what's going on and I'll put the kettle lead in sorry the figure of eight lead and it seems just as dead still not playing nice let's see what voltage we've got on the back of this then so I'd say that looks like a ground Oh, we'll check on these capacitors here because yeah that looks like the, the supply for the um for that chip there. Alright, so we're going to volt DC. I'll just get that bit of solder out of the way before we short anything. And we'll see what voltage we've got on here. Only half a volt. Well, I would have thought it would be more than that because that chip has got to be, uh, I would have thought, powered all of the time. So it looks like the problem is further back. So we'll unplug this and we'll try and see. Actually, there's a little, there's a little fuse or something, a little res fusible resistor maybe. Uh, where's my little magnifying glass gone? There it is. Let's have a look. It's a 330 ohm, so I don't think so. Uh, I can't see any zero ohm resistors or anything on here. Let's see where this... Uh, power rail ends up because it looks like it goes through a few different places see so these ones here man. there's a couple of hundred ohm resistors on the front by the look of it yeah a couple of 100 ohms we've got a little 
light dependent resistor there that must be for to dim the display so it's not too bright on the uh, on a night time right let's see where this goes so it goes to that pin there So the third pin, sorry the fourth pin, fourth pin there, alright, I think we might have to pull this board out to try and figure out where it goes from there. Alright, let's go take a screwdriver and we'll take these four screws out. just come out like that right so what's holding the board in then nothing just this transformer so I think they've got sort of glue on it that's uh, stopping it from detaching from the plastic that's it bottom bit out of the way now. Let's see if I can have a look at the bottom of the board. So yeah it was about the fourth pin in wasn't it? Which would be this big rail here. This big power rail here. Which doesn't appear appear to have any which doesn't appear to have any power on it. Actually, that one's the ground. Is that right? Let's just double check this again. I'll just leave that out. Let's plug this back in. So that's ground, let's see where that goes. That goes to the side there. Right, so we know that's ground. And that's the fourth pin up. That's measuring 33 ohms, that's 33 ohms, not 330. Right. So we still haven't got any power on that fourth one up. Yeah, that goes to there. Right. So, one, two, three, four. Oh, it looks a small trace, that. So we've got two two voltages or AC voltage rather from the transformer go to the first two pins on the connector that could possibly be for the uh, VFD there you are. I'm going to plug this back in and we'll just measure it from the bottom because I think it's easier So that pin there. So now where does that go to? I did notice a voltage regulator on the board. Which was here. Let's see where that goes to.
wonder if that is a voltage regulator or just a transistor. I would say it's a voltage regulator by where it is on the board. I mean, I could be wrong, but I wonder if we can power it up where it is. while avoiding the main section which is over here right now I think that was ground and we'll just see if we get anything on these ones here Six point three volts. That's a bit weird. I would have thought it would be five volts or something out of there. So I've just uh, I've just had a, a quick five minutes over the board, and I can't see anything obvious. But I'm not too happy with the way this uh, voltage is on here. Like I said, I just measured it before there, and we seem to have some odd voltages here. I mean, at eight which doesn't seem right and 6.3 so I think I want to pull that component out I think it's a voltage regulator but we'll pull it out we'll see exactly what it is and then we'll see if we can work out what the voltage should be on there because uh, voltage regulators if it is one I've normally got written on what uh, what voltage their output is so I'll just get a bit of flux on that and we'll use a bit of solder wick and see if we can get it out some solder on it first let's make it easier for the wick to soak it up well, let's see if I can just pull it out from the other side so that having a heat sink on it's uh, soaking up all the heat while burning my fingers. Right. Now we'll clean up those holes with a bit of solder wick. And we'll see where it is. Give this a bit of a clean up while we're here. Right. Let's move this out of the way a little bit so I've got a bit of bench space. And we'll see if we can push this out of the heatsink. And it is a 7812, which is a 12 volt positive 12 volt regulator if it was a 7912 that would be a minus 12 volt regulator so so on these we've normally got the input ground and then the output so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug this back in and we'll see what we've got on the input while it's out of circuit Right, so middle one should be, I don't know, we'll use the ground from here and we'll see what we've got on the first pin. And we've got 13.5. Now before that we only had 8. Now that means either this has failed or there's a short further on in the circuit. So I'm just going to unplug it a sec. 
And we'll see what we're like between that and ground. I'll stick that on ohms and we'll go from here to ground from here to the output. And there doesn't appear to be a short. So I'm leaning towards that regulators field. Now I shall see if I've got a replacement one and I'll be back momentarily. Right, so I've managed to find another 7812. So we'll pop that in and we'll see if it makes any difference. Let's put it in the heatsink first. We'll just get it in the uh, holes. I'll try and get it in the holes. I think. Uh, that's it. Right. I'll just secure one leg first and then we'll just move it down a little bit so it's uh, I suppose we could always trim the legs off. But let's do it like that. Right, and we'll solder these ones. And then we'll see if this makes any difference. Just give it a quick clean up with a bit of IPA first. Right. I need to put the transformer back in. And then we need to plug the display back in as well. Right, let's see if that has made any difference. And it appears not. So let's see what voltages we've got on there now. And let's use this ground over here. And it appears to be the same. Get the probe on here. I wonder if there's a better ground. I'll try swapping my leads around. Yeah, so we've got 6.3 volts there and we should have 12 volts. So there's something further on in the circuit, I think, pulling it down. Of course, we've ruled out the regulator now because I've just swapped it. I mean, that's not to say the one I've put in is faulty, but uh, unlikely. So where do we go from here? Right, so we've got an inductor. And then it seems to go over to this. What this way? I wonder if we just lift the leg of that inductor and we'll just see uh, if we get the 12 volts there. That'll prove that the regulator's working as well. Uh, so just put a bit of solar on here. And then we'll just lift the leg of this component, like so. I'm not bother plugging the display in, we'll just plug the transformer in. And keep my power, my fingers away from the mains. Right, let's see what we've got in here now. Still not right. Right, 
Well, we know the problem's somewhere around about this regulator. I don't know whether the regulator goes to anywhere else. Or whether it just comes straight to there, but there's definitely seems to be either the power's not going in or the power's not coming out. There's definitely a problem round about there. So I've just uh, had a quick look at the circuit again just to see where this input comes from. And it seems it comes from this point on the transformer here. It goes through a resistor and then through a diode and then to this capacitor here. Now I've just checked the uh, just checked the resistor there. So if uh, we'll just stick it on there, and it was a very low resistance. It was just basically for a sort of fuse, so 1.5 ohms. So that looks okay. And then it goes through a diode, which is just here, and that's okay. So I'm just wondering if it's the only other thing it could be is either the transformer or this capacitor here. So I think I'll pull that capacitor out and we'll just uh, we'll just measure that just to see if uh, that's okay. Because there's nothing else after that voltage regulator, so there shouldn't really be any um, any voltage drop anywhere. So. I'm just wondering if this uh, capacitor has gone faulty. Hang on, let's unplug this uh, transformer again so I can get a hold of it. And it's out. Right. No, it doesn't appear bulged or anything. Well, it's supposed to be a thousand microfarads at 35 volts, and there's no way I were getting anywhere near 35 volts. I mean, I know that's the maximum rating, but you know. Um, right. Let's see. Hmm. That doesn't appear to be right, does it? Tell you what. I shall just use my little other tester here and we'll just see what that one says. Let's get these probes on. One hundred and eighty-seven microfarads. It says. Now that's definitely not right. So, a thousand microfarads, thirty-five volts. We'll see if we can find one of those. All right. So I found a suitable replacement. We'll just uh, double check that it works. So 934 microfarads and it should be a thousand. So I know they've got a bit of a tolerance on them. So I'll pop it in and see if it works. I'm just going to clean these two uh, Holds it with a bit of wick first. Uh, might have resorted to solder sugar on this one. This will be the ground, which is why it's uh, sucking all the heat out of the iron.
That's it. Double check it's in place properly. Right. And we'll plug the transformer back in. Let's get these pliers out of it. And we'll see if we've got any voltage now. promising 23 volts and 12 volts right that looks like we might be getting somewhere at last See if we get anything on the display. Now, is that because we haven't got it switched on? Still nothing. Well, that's a bit disappointing. I'll just double check we've got this uh, plugged in correctly. I'll see if we've got any voltages on the back of here now. got half a volt there still. Hmm. Looks like there might be more than one volt. I don't know what we didn't do. I lifted the leg on that um, on that component, and we never put it back. Oh, I never put it back. No. Right. Let's uh, sort this back out. That I was thinking to myself, I thought that would have fixed it, but. think nice I'm gonna solder that back in Now, fingers crossed, I'll get some life out of it now. Right, how am I going to do with this? Right, let's uh, plug it in and see what happens. Yes. 
looks like it's scanning through its frequencies or something probably because the front panel is not plugged in possibly but at least it's doing something now right let's uh, reassemble and test Right, so let's uh, give it a go and see if it works. I guess it's searching for a station. Well, I haven't got any antenna plugged in and we don't get very good uh, radio reception around here anyway but it appears to be working okay that's the auxiliary um, clock set you gotta hold that down or something uh, I'm not 100% on how to use it the alarm button seems to cycle between the different options there alarm set alright you've got to hold it down that's why so clock set, yeah, there we go, so that's for setting the clock, right, okay, right, appears to be working then, so, another little fix there, um, yeah, so, there we have it, repairing a Bose wave radio. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.